genetically raised them. Oh, Ngayon, may there's some yun. part, ang imposible lang dyan, yung tinatawag natin northbound, mula Ayala hanggang Kalayaan, hanggang Berdia. Isa lang lane yan. So, pag isang lane lang dedicate, at talaga umiksi, isang lane lang dedicate natin sa bus. Para tuloy-tuloy. Pero sinabi ko nga, no, kung dati congest natin itong bus lane na ito, wala nang iba na na dyan kung hindi bus. Then, may mga openings, of course, yan, 200 meters away from intersection para yung lalabas, magpapasok siya, makakapasok, makakalabas. Then, that's the limiter. Ang, ang, ang aming short-term solution, which we're doing every day, is to clear all, all roads. Oh. Saka naman nakakita, ma, may barangay hall sa kalsada. May basketball, basketball court. No? Yan, tinatagal natin ngayon yan. No? So, ano nga, sabi nga namin, yung infrastructure natin, wala, hindi na dadagdagan. Ang sasakyan natin, everyday nagdadagdag. And then, yung disiplina, yung enforcement natin, napakalakas ngayon. No? So, we really need help. No? Ngayon, ito nga yung problema natin, may policy ng gobyerno, itadry run pa lang, nagkaroon na kami ng injunction. So, paano natin gagawin? Paano namin gagawin ng isang polisiya na hindi pa namin kahit dry run pa lang pinipigilan na ng ating korte? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Visa Garcia. Uh, uh, Senator Drillon. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. <clears throat> um, the Undersecretary Garcia mentioned several times about their having been enjoined by the court. And I myself wondering why the court suddenly issued that injunction. May we know, uh, first, what is the basis for the injunction, and uh, what have you done uh, in so far as that injunction is concerned? Sir, after the injunction, lumabas po. Nagpatawag kami ng meeting with Alter Farby because kami ang respondent and the OSG. So, nag MR po kami, I think uh, on the 14th, we will present the evidence po, yung injunction. I am not aware, sir. Firstly, be... what is the basis for the injunction? Is it violation of the... A franchise of uh, this uh, of, of the bus lines using uh, EDSA. May, first, we would like to know what is the basis of the RTC uh, in issuing the injunction. Uh, good morning, Your Honors. Um, uh, beforehand, we already have asked permission from Madam Chair to discuss, uh, considering the fact that there is a, I think, several petitions uh, filed before the Supreme Court, and there is one petition before the RTC. But nevertheless, uh, we're given uh, the liberty to discuss uh, the issues beforehand as regards the provincial bus ban. And we welcome this uh, discussion so that we'll be able to clear the issues. Uh, as regards po, uh, on the basis of the TRO, uh, the way we understand it from our lawyers uh, from the uh, Office of the Solicitor General is that there are, I think, uh, two or three uh, constitutional issues that uh, they have that they upheld uh, equal protection clause to say that there was no distinction between uh, provincial buses from that of the city buses. Uh, there was also an issue about uh, deprivation of private properties as regards uh, having to implement it and that uh, they would, the bus operators uh, would allegedly be prejudiced on account of their existing contracts with the terminals that they're having right now. Uh, so, okay. we are referencing to your notes. I would like to remind also our resource persons that the Senate is not barred from discussing cases. Uh, this is a, the, pre, the president is the S, SCBC versus Senate on the Committee on Banks. Just for your reference. Go ahead. Yeah, we can, and we, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, indeed, uh, the, we, we, we can discuss what was presented in the court. Uh, you are not arguing your case before the Senate. We just want to spread into the record exactly what happened, and uh, in the course of after the, in the committee report, we may address some of these uh, issues being raised. Uh, I have my own views on... Uh, issues like equal protection that's being presented, but I'll keep that to myself in the meantime. I just want to know exactly what is the basis of the court in uh, issuing an injunction when it involves uh, 
thousands of commuters, thousands of people using EDSA, etc. So, you know, police power is a very powerful argument uh, to, to support what you're doing. But, um, of course, there are other views, uh, including breach of contract, equal protection, etc. So, if somebody can describe to us in more detail what the issues are, uh, so that we will know, and the public will know exactly what it is. Mr. Chair, if I may, Madam Chair, uh, I think the injunction was actually handed down and promulgated because MMDA itself admitted that when they issued resolution, MMDA resolution 19-002, they have no power to do so. In the case of Bel Air, the Supreme Court has already said that MMDA has no power to issue ordinances like closing streets. Only LGUs can do that. Can the president or MMC do that? The Supreme Court also said, Mr. Chair, that uh, in Viron versus MMDA, that MMDA has no power yes. to close terminals. Thank you very much, uh, Attorney Colmenari. A very good uh, input for purposes of, 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 of discussion. Maybe we should address that issue when we craft legislation. Is it correct that, uh, is it time to review uh, the powers of MMDA vis-a-vis -vis the LGUs? Uh, when you have, how many LGUs on EDSA? 17? So we have seven, uh, 16 uh, cities and one municipality. Sorry, 16, 16 cities? And one municipality. But and one EDSA, municipality so yes, sir. Uh, uh, governing 24 kilometers of road. Oh, no, EDSA alone, I think uh, we have uh, five, five, five or six, Caloocan, Quezon City, ah, okay. Mandaluyong, uh, Makati, Pasay. Yeah. So, so I can imagine the difficulty of, of managing uh, EDSA with, all, with the LGU invoking their powers under the local government code and which was sustained, uh, which was sustained in, this, in, in uh, previous cases. Maybe we should take a look at that, uh, Madam Chair, and see really the uh, validity of this con of this policy just on EDSA alone. On, on you know, uh, given that it's a thoroughfare uh, that uh, that is so critical to our economic life, maybe we should review the powers of MMDA uh -huh. insofar as that is concerned. And that that's a very important input that, that uh, my good friend uh, Nari here. Uh, put on the table, um, yes. Uh, actually, sir, on MMDA right now, ang uh, uh, crucial point natin yung national law, eh. that's C5, uh, Commonwealth, Quezon Boulevard, and sa Ross Boulevard. So I think that's uh, five or six major thoroughfares na under Punta Gesa. Thank you. Okay, so, yeah, yes, even, but just even five, local government units uh, would have their own uh, views of how to manage the road. Uh, that is, to me, an important policy issue which we should debate on. We're not depriving uh, the LGUs of any power. It's just on that particular issue which, which has become so vital to our, our, our life, the, the management of EDSA. Uh, so I just say, and I, I'm not saying that we should, but what I'm saying is this is a valid issue for us to debate, and maybe the chair does have to chair. Yes. Huh? Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. We recognize the presence of our majority floor leader, Senator uh, Zubiri. Um, Congressman Villafort has raised his hand. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> The problem of decongesting EDSA in traffic, of course, is the long -term, there are long-term solutions already being worked out by the government. Uh, an effective public uh, multimodal transport system is, I think, the key. Kung nagawa na yung PNR po, I think less people will ride the bus. <laughs> but pending the issue on the Supreme Court and the Quezon City injunction, yung proposal ko sana kanina, which was also raised by uh, Senate President Soto, Sana, you can also immediately implement the 10 to 4 a.m. partial bus ban. 
Then secondly, yung proposal na yung uh, to clear all public streets from uh, para to decongest. Uh, but I'm surprised. I have not heard that you know. Uh, walang uh, yung part, one one solution that I would like to propose, which I have not heard, is why don't we st strictly enforce and uh, prohibit colorum buses in EDSA, which amounts to a thousand. I mean, I've not heard that. So that's another solution, I think. Because once we, uh, you know, we stop the colorum buses, then this will decongest. Then thirdly, if I may propose, have we thought about motor pooling? Because based on data, 240,000 plus uh, private cars, but over 60% are single passengers. So uh, I've not, uh, maybe you can study uh, motor pooling. Abroad, uh, two passengers motor pooling, but maybe in Philippines, a three passenger is more... Uh, suitable because people have drivers. Then yung ano po, um, yung strict enforcement talaga po, importante po talaga yan. So, because what I'm saying now is we cannot solve this problem uh, today, but sana what this hearing hopefully will address yung immediate solution. Kasi again, I really believe that while you are trying to solve issues, problems, you said, uh, sabi ni Yusek Jojo, Mr. Chair, na his hands are tied, nagkaroon siya ng proposal na tiyaro, because apparently, uh, sir, uh, Mr. Chair, there was really lack of public consultation uh, on, uh, bigla nag-implement po ng uh, BASBA na kulang ang uh, consultation. And nag-dry run po sila uh, recently lang. Dapat, uh, while we are trying to solve this problem, dapat multi ang multi ang approach. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Congressman Villaforte. Senator Dula? Yes. Um, <clears throat> Congressman El Rey brought up a very good point, colorums. First, how many colorums are there on EDSA? Uh, how many colorum buses would fly EDSA, if you know? Sir, first now, yung pagdating sa colorum, may enforcement kami dyan. Every day alone, we have 100 plus apprehension ng colorum. Naka ano yan, sir, uh, naka-impound yan for three months minimum sa side ng MMDA. So, yung colorum talaga ginagawa namin yan. Kung meron pa man, uh, I think we need to make some measures, mga GPS, gawing yung technology, kasi misa dyan yung kambal plaka pag lumagpas na, no? sabi ko. Pero ano, intensive po talaga yung pag ano namin ng kolorong. Would you have a record of the owners of these kolorong buses? Uh, I don't have a record. Mr. Chair, if you may, I, I, based on uh, data, I think there are over 1,800 uh, kolorong buses flying. 1,800? That's based on newspaper reports. Oh, that, so not uh, only 300, not only 100. Well, that is apprehended. Oh, every thousand. month, sir, every month. Huh? Including UV Express. Every month, the apprehension po kami 100. Is the, this data of Congressman Villafuerte correct? I don't know. It's LT5. 1,800 colorum buses? Uh, I would not know with all due respect to Congressman yeah, Villafuerte. I would not know the exact number. And no one would know the exact Assuming number. Assuming half because, of that. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> so far as... Uh, in so far as the uh, colorum buses along EDSA are concerned, as mentioned by uh, Yusek, Gar uh, Yusek uh, Garcia, uh, not only is LTFRB and DOTR working together in addressing colorum, but also together with the established uh, agency under the IAC. Yeah, uh, so that is why uh, maybe, you know, we shame them. If we cannot, you know, do we have a list of who these people are? Oh, yes. The indulgence of Senator yes. Frank, uh, I think the lady has some answers on the colorum. Uh, I am Julia Tensus of the Samahang Transport Operators ng Pilipinas. Regarding the colorum thing that uh, Senator Drillon is asking now, I think wala na pong colorum buses. Ang nagiging colorum buses po is yung mga doble plaka lang, pero when it comes to yung guidelines and strict implementation of the Franchising, napakahigpit po ng LTFRB. Dumadaan kami sa Karayom para ho maayos namin ang aming mga franchises. Ma'am, ano uh, yung doble plaka? Ayun, kambal plaka po mostly, uh, no offense on the taxi. Marami po yan sa taxi. Uh, yung mga double plate, marami po sa taxi yan. Ginagamit nila plaka ng taxi? Uh, dalawa po, alimbawa AYB111, magiging dalawang unit yun. Ayun po ang tawag sa doble plaka. Pwedeng nag, nagkakaroon po ng huli ang LTO kung minsan nagsasabay 
nagsasabay yung sa mga taxi po ito kadalasan. Uh, I'm speaking in sa bases po. Kami po sa bases talaga, siguro, kuloron ng pong kuloron na nag, nagdi-dispatch sa late in night, eh yan po eh talagang, kumbaga eh, nagtatago na parang multo yan up to 3 a.m. o 4 a.m. in the morning. Pero when it comes doon sa talagang regular hour po, parang wala na po ako talagang masasabing meron pang kuloro. Thank you po. Uh, Madam Chair, well, uh, I don't know where my good friend, uh, Deputy Speaker William Fuerte, got his figure of 1,800. But anyway, Madam Chair, while you were out, uh, I, I proposed that we review the powers of the MMDA insofar as traffic management is concerned. Because, uh, and, 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 and uh, I think uh, we can have a, a good debate on that. Uh, it's, uh, it's about time that we review, given the chaotic situation, uh, because it has been brought out that uh, the reason for in the injunction, correctly, is that the MMDA admitted that they had no power, yeah. that the power belonged to the LGUs. And therefore, maybe it's an opportunity for us to review this uh, particular aspect. Because otherwise, uh, uh, the implementer is hamstrung by the uh, lack of authority as found by the, by, by, by the courts. Senator Gillon, as a matter of fact, I, was, I mentioned it earlier, that since we expanded the definition of Metro Manila to include Mega Manila, Rizal, Cavite, as well as Laguna, that perhaps we should really look into the mandate of the MMDA. Thank you for pointing it out also, sir. I'd Madam like to Chair, acknowledge... Madam I, Chair, just, just, just uh, before we move forward, and I'd, I'd like to associate myself with the uh, uh, observations made by our minority floor leaders. If we could uh, at least hear from, from, from MMDA, what, what's their point of view regarding this particular issue? Because as mentioned a while ago, there are only about, what, six or seven cities na tinatamaan po ng EDSA. And if you are to, to, to say na... You are asking for 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 at least uh, some sort of power to ensure na address natin yung problema na ito. Do, do you support that? I mean, Senator Dillon uh, already mentioned about the importance of discussing it. As we need to do our job in this particular hearing, we wanted to make sure that after the hearing, after this uh, uh, public hearing, we'll be able to come up with uh, um, uh, to aid us in legislating measures. So would you support that? Would you say that you need it? Because as you mentioned, wala ho kayong power. Ito yung nag, 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 nag pull back sa inyo para implement yung uh, gusto nyo i-implement. Is that, is that what you're saying? We just wanted to hear. Before we listen to the answer of you, Seth Garcia. Include in your answer. Senator Soto. Thank you very well. much, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, include in your answer, uh, response to what we just heard, this is a very serious matter. Wala ro koloro. Uh, sir, uh, uh, regards sir sa EDSA, no, yung bus, talagang wala na eh, for, for us ha, baka sa probinsya madami. Pero sa EDSA per se, if, uh, kung meron makakalusot sabi niya siguro ni Ma'am sa gabi, no? pero wala na talagang, ang madami kami nahuhuling kolorum, UV Express. Okay, uh, Yusek Garcia, sandali ha, magdadagdag lang si Alex Yage ng provincial buses regarding kolorum, sir? Uh, uh, Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair. Ang uh, colorum po kasi, may definition po yan. Ang definition po ng colorum, as per uh, LTFRB, ang present regulation po, yung uh, unit na karehistro po ng, uh, ng uh, uh, white plate, yung uh, ano po, private po siya, tapos ginamit yung pampasayero. Y yun po talagang... Uh, Died in the world na kolorum yun. Kasi white plate, ginamit mong public car vehicle. At second definition po ng kolorum ng LTFRB, ito po yung yellow plate, yellow ang plaka po niya, uh, uh, meron yung franchise yan, kaya, kaya, kaya lang po, hindi siya dumadaan doon sa tamang prangkisa niya. Dumadaan po siya sa ibang linya. Out of line ang tawag po doon. Pero ang definition po niyan, do, doon sa Joint Administrative Order ng LTFRB LTO, o, o, uh, 17-001, no? ang definition po noon, colorin din po yun. So, ang binagit po ni Ma'am Juliet, 
uh, regarding Metro Manila po. Ang MMDA po, nag-implement nag na po sila panahon pa po ni Chairman Bayani Fernando ng sinatawag nila na uh, organized bus route system. Ito po yung mga terminal ng sa Metro Manila. Meron pong sa Navotas, sa, doon sa uh, Malanday, Fairview. So ang nangyayari po niyan, pag susundin po natin strictly po yung uh, organized bus route na yon, ang city bus, bago po bumiyahe, ipapakita niya muna yung kanyang uh, prangkisa doon sa dispatcher ng uh, na control po ng MNDA, titinan ng uh, dispatcher ng MNDA na ito ay na naka-franchise doon sa ruta na yon, at yung driver na yon ay valid yung kanyang uh, license tsaka lang ho, pinapabiyahe yan. So, ang pro nagiging problema lang po, uh, nagkakaroon ho tayo ng mga city bus na nagkakaroon ng uh, tinatawag nating catching trip. Ito yung uh, gusto nga iwasan ni Mayor Isko Moreno sa mga jeep sa Manila. Nagkakating trip, hindi sila dumadaan sa OBR. So, ang masasabi po natin doon, lalabas yung parang kolorum din ho yun dahil hindi siya dumaan doon sa organized bus route system. Doon naman ho sa provincial buses po, uh, let's say, example po, bibigyan ko po ng example, uh, galing po kayo ng Quezon province. Ang, ang karamihan po linya dyan, either three routes po yan eh, na papasok na Manila. One route goes to Cubao. Ito po yung, let's say, Lucena, Cubao. The second route, Lucena to Pasay. Ito po yung Bendia. Meron pang isang ruta galing din ng Quezon province papunta ng Sampaloc. Ito yung pupunta ho ng Ligarda. Ang nangyayari po niyan, kung meron ho kayong franchise route na, na Lucena, Cubao, hindi ho ninyo pwede magamit yung bus na yon, particular bus na yon, na pupunta ng Bendia. Kahit na ang haba-haba na ho ng pilot dun sa Lucena, hindi ninyo pwede gamitin papuntang Bendia uh, yon, kasi ang linya nun hanggang Cubao lang. Okay, Mr. Yagi, maraming salamat sa pag-define uh, ano ba talaga yung kolorum, ano? may iba't ibang klase. Uh, Yusef De Leon, nagtataas kayo ng kamay. Ma'am, uh, what we fail also to highlight is uh, we have currently around 4,000 city buses in EDSA, flying EDSA. Unfortunately, these 4,000 buses are operated by at least 130 operators. Imagine that, sir. Along a certain route, 130 operators are competing for passengers. In other countries, ma'am, we only have one or two operators. Sa, sa buong syudad na yon. And uh, what, we, what we are pointing out is that we will need to rationalize our bus operations. We will need to have a consolidated bus operations para mas maging efficient itong ating bus transportation system. If we can uh, help the executive, ma'am, and uh, the legislative para to push for this consolidation of franchises along our uh, city routes. Um, uh, so, baka naman ang mangyari ito. So, isa o dalawang kompanya lang magpapatakbo. No, no ma'am. Uh, we will ask them, the existing bus operators, to consolidate into okay. one uh, or two uh, bus oh, operators. Kasi may mga oras na walang laman ang mga bus. Exactly, ma'am. Kung yes. kailan kailangan sila, nagkukulang. Diba? Yun, yun din yung nangyari. Meron din akong, ano, ha, may, merong katanungan si Senator Agara. Tama din yung tanong niya. Nais kong tanungin din, bakit niyo pinapayagan na yung mga bus, siguro itong mga HPG, kung kayo ba yung in charge dyan, bakit sila tumitigil kung saan-saan para magsakay at magbaba ng pasahero? Sige. On another note, ma'am, is uh, if you may, uh, yung mga bus stops natin, we will need to really uh, organize and uh, build uh, appropriate bus stops para yung mga pasahero and yung mga buses natin, doon lang talaga sila titigil. Unfortunately, we don't uh, have a budget right now uh, to build these uh, appropriate bus stops para we can really enforce uh, this. Uh, have, you, have you determined uh, the, most, the, the most appropriate bus stops? Kasi kung maglalagay kayo ng mga linyang gano'n, dapat alam na yan. Uh, Yusef Giorgio. Uh, Ma'am, actually, I already coordinated with DPWH. Sabi ko nga sa kanila, kailangan baguhin na natin itong mga bus stops natin kasi kanalasan nasa chalk point. So, then regarding sa sinabi nyo, bakit pinapayagan? Hindi namin pinapayagan, Ma'am. Ang dami namin huli. So, nasa 20,000 yan. Yung tinatawag naming open door policy. 
Ibig sabihin, pag nasa second lane ang bus, nagbukas ng pinto, may bumaba o sumakay dyan, hinuhuli ng camera yan. Madami kami yan. O kaya nagbaba, nagsakay ka sa hindi loading ang loading base, hinuhuli rin namin yan. No? So, yun. Uh, yung sa color of no, out of line, uh, katatext din lang po sa engineer namin, ang dami rin namin huli ng out of line. Talagang Madam wala Chair, silang kadalala. Uh, uh, just, uh, uh, just, yes. just, just a few seconds, Madam Chair. I think we should not limit the the discussion of Colhoron to buses yes, only yes. because you yourself, uh, you said, Jojo, made mention about the UV Express, yes, etc. Yes. Ang dami ho eh. Okay. We're not only talking about buses here. And so, the, the, the numbers that was mentioned a while ago, may, 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 be, may be more, <laughs> Madam Chair. Ano mo, totoo ba na dun sa mga ibang mga uh, terminals, mga interim terminals, may bayaran para makakuha ng slot ang mga UV Express. Parang 100,000 para yes. makapag-operate. Iniimbestigahan ba ninyo yan? Kasi okay. pampadagdag din yan ng traffic. Okay, ma'am. Yung sa mga interim, yung sa amin, interim, no? May lumabas dati dyan, may mga sticker, etc. na ito raw hindi hinuhuli. Yan, report ka agad natin yan. Pinatanggal natin yan. And yung, ano, yung sa mga interim again, yung hawak namin ng MMD, no? Nandyan yung mga operators natin. May ikpit ba mga order ko sa kanila regarding sa terminal fee? Sabi ko, hindi pwede pagkakitaan ang terminal fee. No? Ibig sabihin yung binabayad ng mga bus. Uh, kung gusto nyo pagkakitaan yan, yung dinala naming tao sa inyo, commercial value yan, eh, yung foot traffic eh. So ayaw namin pagkakitaan nila. May ikpit na bilhin ko sa kanila. Sabi ko, sige rin nyo, 50 pesos lang eh. Sa ibang private terminal, umaabot ng 400. Kasi nga, sabi ko, pagkaya, hindi natin pinagkakitaan ng terminal fee. No? Hindi ipapasa sa tao dyan. Maintenance lang yan eh. Itanungin ko nga yung may-ari dyan sa Valenzuela. Um, what is your name again, sir? Magkano po yung sinat-charge niyo para mag-park uh, dyan yung Sa provincial po, noong nag-dry run, wala pong charge. Libre po. Ano mo na maintain yung terminal mo? Meron mga concessionaires na lang doon na nagbebenta ng kung ano. No? Opo, ma'am. Kasi yung terminal namin, existing na po siya. Tapos sa uh, meron kami yung konting commercial space doon. So, okay. Yun. Thank you. SM, papano ninyo pinabawi yung inyong terminal? Uh, good morning again, Ms. Uh, Madam Chair. Uh, during the dry run, we did not charge anything. As a matter of fact, we encouraged the participation. We even paid for the toll fees of these bus operators. Paano po minimaintain? Uh, may, uh, may budget po tayo for the operations in the meantime. At saka syempre maganda rin dahil mapapatronize nila yung mall ninyo. Yeah. Diba? I mean, well, admitted. may mga ganon incentives. I mean, magpa magpapakatotoo rin tayo dito. Yes. Um, Madam Chair. So siguro, uh, Deputy Speaker Fernandez. Yeah. Uh, I, I just have one question uh, sa MMDA with regards to the uh, rate of preliminary injunction that was issued by uh, RTC um, Branch 223. If it happens that this um, uh, Preliminary to preliminary rate of preliminary injunction will have a permanency, and the the the, um, the court will not allow the um, the uh, passage of the uh, provincial buses to EDSA uh, to uh, to allow to the passage of uh, buses in EDSA. What will be the policy of the MMDA with regards to the uh, interim terminals that have been uh, uh, established by uh, Valenzuela and Santa Rosa? So, uh, of course, no? pag merong, sabi ko nga, pag inutusan kami ng court, we will follow. No? Rule of law yan eh. So, yung, ang in-injunction na yung MC ng LTFRB and yung policy namin ng MMDA, yung based on the MC of the of LTFRB, ililipat yung routes eh. Kasi nga, kung patuloy yung line doon, yung city bus natin, i-extend para may sumalo. And some P2P for the taxi service yan sinasabi ko, no? Hanggat may injunction yan, hindi namin pwede gawin. Kasi nga, pag nag-dry run kami at in-enforce namin yan, makokontempt kami ng court eh. Actually, una ko nga po tinanong ma'am sa OSG, baka pwede yung dry run uh, voluntary naman. Ano? Ang pinangahawakan ko naman sa dry run voluntary, no? I just even sir yung eh. Before the injunction, nag-meeting kami. Kasi hindi ko naman alam na may injunction eh. Nandun lahat ng operators, tinanong ko, Hindi ko pwede magkaroon ng enforcement pag nag tayo kasi wala pa yung MC. Sabi ko, are you all willing to try this one sa inyong policy? Nakiusap ako. Sabi ko, o oh, lalaki sa lalaki, sumunod tayo, 
gawin natin yung dry run. Lahat sila umuha sa akin. Ha? Paglabas ng injection, tinanong ako ng media, Sir, paano yung dry run nyo? Sabi ko, eh, wala akong pinipilit. Kasi makukontemp na ako eh. Sabi ko, wala akong pinipilit. Ang pinangawakan ko, yung usapang lalaki namin. Ba't siguro usapang babae para pinipilit ka? Yun nga, So, dumating ang Wednesday. Di ang galing. Lahat ng umuha sa akin, nawala. No? Siguro may tatlo, dalawa. Pagdating ng Thursday, tinawag ako ng media kung pahihinto ko raw yung dry run. Sabi ko, wala akong papahinto kasi wala kami pinago dahil bawal sa korte. So, sinabi ko, ngayon, kung magbaluntaro kayo dumaan dyan, thank you. Ayaw nyo dumaan, okay lang. Kasi nga may injunction. Ganito, no, Yusak Garcia. Siguro kasi nag-file, sayang wala na si Congressman Garvin <laughs> dito, eh. Ayun. Baka naman pwede, aka, at bayan muna, baka naman pwede mag-usap kayo at ma... Kung magkasundo sa isang particular scheme, kunyari nga yung madaling araw yes. yung pagganon, baka kayo. naman pwedeng pag-usapan din yung kaso na Ma para magkaroon. Ma'am, kaya lang ang nag-file operators eh. Hindi sila eh. Hindi yung mga congressmen so, natin eh. Pwede ba ninyong ayusin yan kung magkaroon ng oras imbis na total ba? Ah, meron din kasing isang facet nito yung tatanggalin talaga yung mga terminals oh, yeah. doon sa EDSA eh. No? Ma'am, I think that's the direction already of the OTR. No, sabi ko nga kanina, ano ba gusto? We have 97 terminals in Metro Manila. Ano ba gusto natin? Bawat operator na may pera bibili ng lupa gagawin terminal. Na parang kabutay kahit saan meron. No, no, no. I, I understand also. Diba? But um, Senator Zubiri, you have, a, you have a additional question. We, we need question, to sir. start somewhere. I agree with uh, the proposition of you said, Jojo. Ma'am, that we have to start somewhere. Kaya yung nakita po natin sa television ng isang araw, yung Carmageddon sa EDSA, although you were trying to do something new, pero... Uh, unfortunately, it did not pan out the way we wanted it to be. But uh, dapat out of the box solutions nga. And, and, I, and personally, I feel itong provincial uh, terminals outside of Metro Manila would have been one of the solutions. Unfortunately, my TRO, nag-file po sila sa korte. Sana mapabilis na lang yung TRO at ma-discuss po yung merits of the case kagad. Para sa ganun, may mailabas po tayo na, na options para sa ating mga kababayan. Yung sa colorum issue, Ms. Madam Chair, it's an issue of lack of enforcement also. Because if it's colorum, mahuhuli. Dapat tuliin. Huwag da, wag tayo ma, 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 ma awa at mahiya dahil yun nga, nagdadagdag po ng sasakyan kung saan dapat hindi madagdagan na. On the lack of action, also, Madam Chair, I just want to raise this. Nandito yung MMD8 at tama sa wala yung chairman po. Uh, I was listening to you in the uh, radio earlier. Unfortunately, I had to go to the POC as part of the General Assembly ng sports. But, um, Yung lack of action for proposed projects, I don't know if you can recall, Madam Chair, and many of you were here, uh, Senator Nancy, Senator Frank, Senator Sherwin, Senator Joel. The first speech I gave was about inclusive mobility. That was on August, August 2016. It's been three years na po. It's, and I know uh, Senator Joel mentioned it as well as Senator uh, Sherwin kanina. Yung elevated, when you say inclusive mobility po, yun yung elevated walkways all around Metro Manila. Alam ko may budget po kayo ng 400 million, hindi ko po alam ano nangyari. Uh, nasa budget po yan last year uh, under the DOT. But alam mo rapansin ko sa news, nung nagkaroon po ng konting problema doon sa bus lane, lahat ng pasahero, which makes sense, because what will you do in the bus for 4 hours? Maglakad ka na lang, mas mabilis pa. Ay naglakad. Pero wala po silang madadaanan na area sa EDSA para ganun karaming tao maglalakad. On an elevated walkway, and I show you these pictures because this was part of my speech, gentlemen, ladies, alam mo sa Shanghai, galing ako na Shanghai, galing ako na Singapore, they put already elevated walkways in high traffic areas, even in Thailand, in Bangkok. Uh, itong mga high level, traffic, uh, high level traffic areas, dinalagyan ng elevated walkway para may option po yung ating mga kababayan. Doon nga sa uh, Singapore and Shanghai, gumagamit na sila ng electric moped sa taas. Mga mabilis at bisikleta sa taas. May bike lane na designated para sa kanila at may walking lane. You know, EDSA is only about 22 kilometers, if I'm not mistaken. On a bike, that's nothing. On an, el an electronic, electric uh, moped, that is nothing po. You can go, this will, this will help ease. Ako po, kung meron po elevated walkway to the Senate from Makati, I'll take it. I'll take it. And uh, yun na lang gagamitin ko. It's probably only about 5 kilometers from Makati. 
And it's not a bad ride. I mean, it's not a bad. Dire-diretso lang po yan. Magbisikleta ka. Di ba? Parang si Y. Kurat uh, sa mura nung araw, nung bisikleta na yun, pumigil na rin kasi baka mabangasan ang bus dun sa, sa Commonwealth. Pero yung pong punto ko, this was fully supported by the MMDA in 2016. And I believe there was a budget of 2017 of 400 million. Then you have options of clearing up Pasig. I do not know why we never use Pasig. In many large cities na pinupuntahan natin, for example, Singapore, galing po ako dyan kahapon with my daughter, yung three keys, they have key, keys, it's quays, but it's keys, they call it. They use it for mobility. Talagang in and out of the city. And ginagamit talaga siya. Sa atin, wala po tayong ganang mode of transportation sa Pasig. And Pasig can clearly decongest EDSA. And then the third Probably possible solution is the opening really of the connector road of SMC, which will connect North and South Expressway and later on by uh, the MVP group, which will also have the second connector road. Kasi hindi na po dadaan yung napakaraming uh, bus na galing Norte papunta ng South or South papunta ng Norte, hindi na po dadaan ng EDSA. So these are just three simple questions, Madam Chair, uh, three simple points. Uh, number one, Madam Chair, I know this hearing is only was designed for the provincial uh, bus terminals, but I do not know when I'll be able to have a chance to ask this, Madam Chair. This is for lightening up the traffic in EDSA. I think these are very three very important points. One is when will we start building elevated walkways on EDSA? Number two, when can we start using Pasig River? There was, I know, Pasig River Rehabilitation Commission. Ang ganda ganda ng presentation nila. Hanggang na yung presentation pa rin. Yung Pangatlo, yung uh, connector roads, nandito po sila. Maybe we can ask them when they'll open it because Christmas is coming up. Ang mapapakinggan lang po natin ay si Joe Marie Chan for five hours in the car uh, sa kanya mga Christmas carols para hindi uminit ang ulo natin. I think we need to know when they're planning to open these connector roads. So with that, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, may I ask the first part on the elevated walkways? I believe you, Seca De Leon, is uh, raising his hand Ma'am, uh, for the elevated walkways, we call it uh, greenways. Uh, we already have that uh, plan, but unfortunately, wala siyang uh, budget niyan for the NEP. Uh, so if uh, the House and the Senate can help us uh, fund that uh, project, it will really uh, greatly help uh, mobility options of our commuters, specifically for uh, our uh, uh, MRT stations. It really lacks accessibility uh, infrastructure. Uh, nakita niyo yung uh, banda sa ADB. Uh, yung uh, dadaanan ng uh, tao, halos ganun ng kanipis. So, if we can uh, help uh, fund this uh, project, Kasi bag bago ma-fund, may estimate na ba kayo? Meron yes, ba kayo yes, plano? Yeah. Magkano? Uh, for the entire Metro Manila, we will need around uh, 7 billion pesos from uh, Quezon City all the way to uh, Paranaque. We will have around 100 kilometers of uh, greenways all over the country, uh, all over Metro Manila. Okay, thank you. Next. With the support, Madam Chair, of our yeah. colleagues, uh, as an institutional amendment, maybe we can do that. Uh, make it a legacy of this administration na magkaroon na talaga ng walkways, elevated walkways. And then uh, on the second uh, part on Pasig, wala talaga tayong plano gamitin ng Pasig. Uh, uh, as, at saka hindi yung malilit po na mga baroto yung mga malilit na nakikita namin sa ilu-ilu yan, mga gaket yung malilit na small boats baka maganda siguro yung katulad sa Europe na covered their condition sa loob na malalaki magagamit parang bus Sir, sa Pasig naman Pasig River, yung sa ferry nag-alam ko sir, kami bid lang noong December ng FS, ang nag-timon kasi dyan sir, ang DBM and uh, DPWHN kami and DOTR so, talagang may plano po sila, no? i-improve yan. Uh, di ba? Nabid na yung FS, no, Mark? Noong December, nabid, kami bid lang ata nila. So, ang gano'n, feasibility study pa. <laughs> okay, no? We're waiting for it, hindi naman kami pwede gumalaw ng... Well, well, Alam mo, hindi na kailangan ng feasibility study yan, yes, Yusek. Yes, Biyahe mo na lang sila sa abroad para makita nila. Singapore lang, lapit Tama. lang. Tama, sir. Para makita lang. It's, it's a clear, present program in many major yes, cities. Yes, sir. They used the waterways. Uh, Walang traffic doon. Uh, actually, sir, ang plano nga namin noong una, nung pag kami, sa MMD, kasi kami may hawak ng ferry, uh, sa amin lahat nung PR niyan eh. We have 20 plus PRs, no? Then we asked the LGU kung saan nila gusto yung lagay yung PR kasi mas kabisado nila yung LGU nila, no? Sabi ko nga, nung proposal ko, baka pwede, yung mga ferry, parang bus na lang, 
So, magkukulang ng prangkisa sa, ma sa marina, tapos magmumawala kami na pwedeng daanan yung mga PR namin. Through that, open ang competition, may improve din na yung service. Limited number lang po kasi yes. baka naman magka-headsa din yung yes, yes. Pasig River. Tama At baka magkabungguhan pa sila doon. Pero e doon mahirap mag-swimming dahil pag, pag uh, tumalong ka sa Pasig River, sigurado magkakakolera ka eh. Ka Kaya, pero kasama po raw sa BBM ngayon ng stadion, kinuha po nila yung ano eh, yung ano yan, yung pag-aaral po. You can privatize it. That's absolutely correct. Once yes, you sir. get the terminals going, kayo maghawak ng terminals. Yes, as long as hindi lang, uh, again, magkakaroon ng overcrowding doon sa, sa Pasig. Meron lang yatang no... Passing area sa Malacanang. Meron may, po ano, mabagal lang po dapat. May speed. Sa Malacanang. Speed pa, sa may Malacanang area pa. On, yeah, on the third the, issue. Ay, yes, madam. Uh, our Senate Majority Floor Leader. If I remember it correctly, may nag-operate na niyan eh. Yes. Nang Pasig Ferry. Hindi, malaki yun ah. Malaki. Air, aircon yun. I think during the time aircon of President siya? Era. MDA. No, MMD ran it. That's why it kind yes, of like... Yes, yes, yes. Hindi ba aircon yung inoperate nyo? Aircon yun, di ba? Not, not us. Meron pong atang pumasok dati. Dati. Kaya nga ma'am, yun yung inaayos nga namin ngayon. Right now, hindi, apat lang... Yun na nga yung sa George Royal. The mere fact na may pumasok na dati, bakit hindi na lang natin i-improve yun para hindi na tayo maipit dun sa feasibility study? Because... Meron yes. na yan. In fact, may mga existing ter may mga existing terminals na. Meron... For a fact, meron kami sa Makati. Yes. Uh, um, sa may Intramuros, meron din ata. Bakit hindi na lang natin i-improve yon para hindi na tayo ma-access ma ma yung oras natin sa feasibility study? Kasi tama, tama. Meron eh. Tapos uh, ano siguro, Yusek, no? Uh, with the permission of the, uh, my two colleagues, yung, yung ruta na yun, pwede pang turista yan eh. Because yes. like Senator Drilon, who's a, like, I, I am a fan of his uh, move to Uh, protect heritage sites in Iloilo, ang dami nating heritage sites sa Pasig River. The post office alone, pag inilawan mo yan sa gabi, napakaganda. Yes. Yung sa Intamuros, napakaganda. You know, we could even have a river cruise at night uh, dito sa Manila. Napakasayang talaga. And I'm glad Isko is there. Isko Moreno's forward thinking is wants to protect the heritage sites. We can make that part of the, uh, of the route. There could be a tourist... Uh, Uh, type na uh, facility or uh, tour dito sa mga areas na ito. And it could be part of the mobility, ka nga, inclusive yes. mobility. Doon na lang siguro sa uh, mahaba-haba na yung katanungan ko, yung pangatlong uh, point ko, this time I think I will address it to the SLEX and uh, SMC Tollways. When will the vaulted uh, connector road uh, be open. Meron na po akong sagot, sabi ni to, Sir Fetay Tugade, but I'm not allowed to say it. Because he promised me not to say it, sila na muna siguro. Madam Chair, ang yung uh, north-south connector namin from Wendia to Balintawak is uh, pursued relentlessly. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, mayroon kami partial opening, temporary partial opening from Wendia to Plaza Dilao. And uh, there is significant increase in traffic already using that, uh, it's, I think about 17,000 vehicles per day on a very limited operational period lang muna because we don't have all the facilities yet. No? Now, we expect that the full, uh, full opening of Bendia to Plaza de Lao probably uh, before, the year end, uh, before the year ends. By, By December, we will probably be opening the entire stretch from Bendia to Plaza de Lao. And then by uh, the first semester of next year, we hope to complete the entire uh, uh, segment three of the Skyway all the way to Balintawak. And we will have, we will have of course, uh, yung mga, um, mga entry and exit points, uh, several entry and exit points in the Quezon City. Uh, And, uh, of so course, secretary, the buses will be allowed to use it. I call him secretary because he used to be secretary of the DPWH, good friend of ours. So, Sec. Uh, Manny, there is a possibility by the end of the year or first quarter na ating mga kababayan na nakikinig po na yun, hindi na po kailangan dumaan ng EDSA. For example, exit sila ng Makati Skyway papunta ng Balintawak para pumasok sa North Expressway. Tama po yun, sir. Opo. Or they can, they can use actually... Uh, our uh, entry points at uh, dito po sa may Quezon Avenue. Hindi po kayang abutin bago mag-SEA Games. 
Kasi ang dami pong venue nandun sa Clark eh. Uh, halos kalahati yata na entrance na sa Clark uh, at uh, sa Bulacan, sa Philippine Arena malapit. Hindi pa ba kaya, sir? We'll try our best po. Uh, well, uh, my uh, our kind of timetable namin is actually uh, best best friend namin is anywhere between uh, first quarter or second second quarter of next year. And uh, our projection ho namin kasi dito, Madam Chair, is actually if we are able to complete and open the entire stage three of uh, this skyway, we're expecting that about 30% of EDSA traffic will go there. That's fantastic news, Madam Chair. 24 hours by shifting ninyo doon ang trabaho? Yes, yes, 24 okay. hours po. Madam Chair, paano yung sa grupo ng MVP? I, I know Metro Pacific also is trying to put the second connector road. Meron bang taga MVP group dito? Wala ata, no? And maybe that could be just for another hearing. And to close my, my, my line, my train of thought, Ms. Madam Chair, is basically yung uh, provincial bus companies or the provincial terminals sa uh, USEC, anong plano ba dyan? Will it be a PPP uh, or gobyerno magtatayo ng mga terminals na yan? Yung permanent po, I think, uh, the author po makakapagsabi niyan. Pero yung sabi yung interim, yun po, yun lang po yung na-identify namin sa ngayon. The OTR, uh, sir, is it a, a private or public? Uh? Sir, yung uh, ating uh, tagig, it's the government who owns the land. And uh, the concession agreement was signed during the last administration. Private sector will build the and operate the terminal. Yan po yung nas tagig. For the North Luzon uh, Expressway, uh, yun po yung ilalagay natin sa Bukawi area, dun sa Ciudad de Victoria area. Uh, it's an unsolicited proposal. Currently, it's uh, being discussed in NEDA for the final approval of that uh, unsolicited proposal project. I, I, I was, uh, I went, I, I came across that uh, project, the private-public partnership. Maganda yun kasi wala yata kayong gastos dito sa Ciudad de Victoria sa Philippine Arena. I believe they plan, they plan to build a world-class facility there. Magbubukas niya yata yung, yung, ano, no, yung ating, uh, uh, before the SEA Games, yung interchange. I'm concerned about that because our SEA Games venues are also there, the opening of SEA Games will be there. Bukas na ba yan by that time? Uh, the promise of uh, the DPWH is uh, they will finish the uh, interconnection yung sa tawid po ng uh, Bukawe uh, by uh, end of October. So uh, this uh, coming week, mag-launch mag, uh, na sila ng mga gearders dun sa ibabaw ng uh, ginagawang flyover na yun. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. This is very enlightening, uh, their answers on this issue. I would like to hear also later on from Alt Mobility and uh, the UP. But Senator Nancy has, or would you like Madam to? Madam Chair, babalikan ko lang yung tanong ko kanina. Okay. If we have a long-term master plan. Kasi katulad nung kahon nung nabanggit nyo kanina, diba? Doon sa FTI, nagka-problema tayo. Hindi matuloy-tuloy yung project kasi may problema. Hindi magawa yung rampa dahil sa right-of-way. Eh, kung meron tayong master plan, dapat siguro nabili na yung, or nagasusa na yung pang-road right-of-way. But, um... Uh, Lumalabas sa parang walang, wala talaga tayong plano. So, I don't know which agency ang dapat um, sumagot. Maybe si Yusek De Leon would know. Actually, uh, Senator Nancy, Yusek De Leon, siguro dapat meron pang isa pang pagdinig kung saan si Secretary Tugade talaga ang mag-present. Kasi lahat yan, harmonized dapat. Rail, road, kung ano man, hindi yung parang magpapadala lang ng tingi-tingi na representative. So be ready with your presentation for your short-term, mid-term, and long-term solutions for traffic. Um, Madam Chair, um, siguro baka maganda rin na idagdag na natin si Secretary Mark Villar or maybe DP, somebody from DPWH para rin ma... Ano nila yung um, side naman ng DPWH. Siguro idagdag ko lang na kasi I was asking kanina si Mayor Rex Kung may nag-present na ba sa kanila ng plano na, kunwari, 10 years from now, ito yung mga dadaanan na kalsada na gagawin or rail project. And apparently, dun sa council, wala pang mga ganong klaseng presentation. Katulad na itong elevated walkway, di ba dapat ngayon pa lang kinakausap niya na yung mga LGUs na dadaanan neto. But I think hanggang ngayon, hindi, baka hindi ngayon lang nila narinig na meron pa lang ganitong proposal ang DOTR. Yun lang, Madam Chair. Alam nyo, kasi ganito yan, no? 
yung mga solusyon dun sa traffic na sabi nga 30% hindi dadaan ng EDSA, NLEX, SLEX Connector Road, LRT1 Extension, uh, bus terminals ng FTI pati dun sa North. Yun lang makikita mo na makakagaan kahit pa paano sa traffic. ba? Diba? Hindi kailangan ng emergency powers para dyan. Kasi pag sinabi ninyo na may emergency powers, anong gusto niyo Walang bidding? Yun ba yon? O pangalawa, anong gusto niyo Hindi niyo makakwestiyon ng korte? Hindi po yan matatanggal ha? sa emergency powers. Papasok pa rin ang korte sapagkat sa konstitusyon natin yan eh. Separation of powers. Hindi talaga pwedeng mailinate. So, kung meron kayong kailangan, kailangan maayos at specific kung anong plano ninyo. Para kung makatulong kami, katulad yan, palalawigin ang kapangyarihan ng MMDA, bakit hindi? ba? Diba? So, siguro, uh, mawalang galang sa kanilang napaka-busy schedule. Pero yung ating mga kalihim at yung ating chairman, siguro naman sa susunod ay makakadalo dito. Sapagkat, ito lang ang venue na narinig ng tao kung ano ba talagang plano ninyo. Dahil doon sa mga hearing ninyong maliliit na gano'n, eh hindi naman nasisiwalat lahat ng direksyon na pinatutunguhan natin. Okay, out mobility. Madam Chair, siguro isang tanong na lang kay Yusek Garcia. Since na TRO nga ho itong provincial bus uh, na, na plano nyo, what is the next plan? Okay, first, doon po sa provincial bus, I'm very confident na pa nag-MR po kami, mag-grant yan. No? Kasi nagtataka kami, hindi pa kami nakapag-present ng ebidensya may injunction kagad. So we're really hoping no, and praying na uh, yung legal team namin will, will ma, ano, kakayanin namin yan. No? So while waiting for that, uh, talagang nakatali po yung kamay namin tungkol sa mga provincial bus uh, ban na yan, what we're doing is really every day to clear all alternate routes. No? Kailangan namin linisin yan para madaan na natin. So, <clears throat> yun pa lang sa, sa ngayon. No? And then of course, yung mga long term, much DOTR and DPWH po makakasagot yan. Ang MMDA po talaga enforcement lang kasi kami, no? talagang ultimo pagtataas lang ng traffic fine, eh. dumadaan kami sa butas ng karayom. So, we're just waiting for that. At uh, yung aming mga, may mga plano pa po kami iba. Katulad ng tinalong kanina ni Tong Elray tungkol sa mga carpooling, lahat po yan meron. Pero matatandaan naman natin, di ba? Uh, I think that was last year, Inintroduce lang namin yung carpooling. May resolution coming from the Senate to stop na pinapaito kami without even trying it. Eh. So, yun. Yun po yung mga plano namin. I believe, Attorney Delga, go ahead, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, we reiterate the uh, statement of MMDA that we respect the uh, TRO issued by the, by the uh, RTC, but nevertheless, we're still uh, we're still look focus on the preparation such uh, that uh, when the time comes that the TRO will be lifted, uh, all systems go in so far as this uh, plan is concerned. We have to understand that uh, part of this part of the traffic congestion problem, as well as having to rationalize public transport is really to limit the number of bus terminals. It has been there for quite some time. These are privately owned, privately managed, and uh, we're counting about 97 uh, terminals that has been uh, counted by MMDA. I don't know how much more terminals around Metro Manila that has not been, that has been operating, and yet uh, they're there. But uh, we need to rationalize this from 100 or so terminals to only about four or five integrated intermodal terminal exchanges where uh, the city buses would meet with the provincial buses and all other modes of public transport when, when the commuters would converge in these terminals. Attorney, um, I mean, Madam Chair, I hope um, you don't mind. Just a follow-up question to Yusek uh, De Leon. Yusek, if by some stroke of luck I convince my colleagues during the budget hearing na dagdagan yung budget ng DOTR, for this purpose, can you implement it? Kasi sayang naman po, magsaslash po ako sa ibang, ibang department, agency, para may dagdag yung sa inyo. Kaya nyo bang patayuin ang elevated uh, walkways na ito? Mr. Chair, yung uh, elevated walkways natin, it does not require uh, very complicated designs. Madali lang uh, gawin yan. So, mas mad madaling uh, gawin. Uh, uh, compared to uh, very complicated structures, Kaya nito gawin in less than uh, two years. 
So talaga, commitment yan. Ha? May mga right-of-way issues pa ba kaya dyan? Hindi na yata, no? Y usually, Mr. Chair, yung mga utilities lang naman na kailangang i-relocate. -re so yan lang po yung uh, uh, concerns natin for greenways. Oh, sige, you have our commitment and support. I will push for this, but please, your commitment is on, rec on the record. Kasi maganda nga itong elevated. Maybe we don't have to start with all the metropolis. I mean, we can come up with a 1 billion fund. No, maybe you can work on EDSA muna. Maybe Makati towards Ortigas. Or the other side, no, the other way. Para sa ganun ay magamit ng tao. Na, lalo yung pinaka-busy na routes. I think Makati kasi Central Business District yan at Ortigas. And if there's an interconnection between the two, yan po muna siguro umpisa natin. I have your commitments, Yusek, ha? And I'm sure the Secretary will agree. So hanapan natin ang what you call institutional uh, funding, uh, institutional amendments. All right, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, uh, Yusek De Leon, ilan po ang in binabalak na intermodal terminals o itong mga bus terminals? Currently, we only have uh, yung three na permanent. Yan po yung uh, PITX, yan po yung FTI, which is Taguig City. And then, yung pangatlo po yung nandun sa Bukawe, Bulacan. So, apat ang pinaplanong intermodal bus, central bus terminal. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Meron na bang pag-aaral ito kung gaano karami o gaano ka uh, laki ang maibabawa sa traffic dito sa EDSA and buong Metro Manila? Because what we're doing right now is we're limiting in provincial bus terminals to come in. So, ang basic question ko, bilang isang motorista at sa mga commuters natin, gaano bibilis ang traffic sa Metro Manila at sa EDSA? Kasi hindi naman natin ginagawa itong projects for the sake of projects. No? Hindi naman to ginagawa natin para, sabi nga ni Chairman, malimitahan yung number of bus terminals. But ginagawa natin ito to ease the traffic. But meron ba tayong simulation kung gaano uh, mag-i-improve ang traffic natin dito sa Metro Manila? Uh, Mr. Chair, yung uh, ating uh, pag-aaral dates back uh, 2012 pa. So, in including uh, may mga pag-aaral din yung JICA. JICA itself prepared the transport roadmap. Uh, also specified na magkaroon tayo dapat nito mga intermodal terminals. With regards to specifics kung uh, ilan yung impact niya, I'll uh, defer to uh, uh, GM Jojo on an impact niya sa traffic. Okay, sir. Uh, yung sa provincial buses here, just what I said kanina, Kung 50% kagad ang mawawala sa yellow lane, definitely, madedeclare na siyong yellow lane natin, bibilis ang behind ng city bus. No? That's number one. Kaya, nga, kaya lang sabi nga namin, in papers, in documents, the way I, I say it, ang ganda. The only thing na talaga makita natin, if it's working, kailangan natin i-drive lang talaga. No? Pero in principle, I said, no, 6,500 ang dumadaan sa yellow lane. I-exclusive natin to, no, to yung mga buses. Just imagine kung half of those mawawala sa yellow lane. Decongested ka agad siya. Bibilis po ang biyahe ng mga commuters. Sa akin, Yusek, very basic. No? From Valenzuela to Makati, from, uh, memorize ko na nga ho ito, from uh, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. will take me two hours ng gabi. Uh, two hours sa hapon ho yan, kasi rush hour yan, for sure. Ngayon, with these four terminals that you are planning to put up, Gaano kabilis na magiging biyahe ko from Makati to Valenzuela? Okay. But when it comes to private, no, sir, may scheme din tayo sa private. Eh. Yan nga yung sinabi ko na carpooling. If, if you can give me some more time, I can elaborate on that one. Ano? Pero sa ngayon nga, ang binigyan namin ng pansin, yung mga commuters mo na, yung sa yellow lane, iisa-isay natin yan. Eh. Yung pagdating mo sa private, tama po yung data kanina. No? 380,000 average na wadaan sa EDSA. Mga 66% niyan private cars. So, mga 245 to 50,000. 70% niyan mag-isa. So, 175,000. No? Sabi ko nga, mag-carpooling tayo two, two or more lang. No? Kalahati lang ang mag-comply niyan. 85,000 kagad ang mawawala. No? And we're just asking three hours in the morning and three hours in the afternoon. That's 6 to 9 and 5 to 8. Ngayon, Ang naging kontra dyan, challenges, sabi, inilipat lang na natin yung traffic sa iba, sa C5. Yeah, it's true, no? Kaya lang, ito yung incentive mo. If you're gonna do carpool, then pwede ka dumaan sa EDSA during those hours, no? Ito, sir, as economics, makakatibi tayo sa gasolina. Makakatibi tayo sa maintenance. Then, ang pinaka-importante, mabawasan ang pollution natin kasi mabawas, no? 
So ngayon, y- yan talaga yung realidad eh. No? Yung, yung sinabi kanina na ad events came color coding, ano yan eh, hindi yung effective yan eh. Sabi ko nga, gusto lang magpapogi ni chairman, bukas mag ad event tayo, 50%, mawawala. Kaya wawa naman yung papalit sa amin, 3 years from now, 5 years from now, times 10 na yung kotse, walang garahe lahat. So kailangan eliminate natin, hindi yung kotse mismo, yung nakasakay, para kahit sampu ang kotse mo, mag-isa ka lang, hindi mo pwede gamitin. But you said very basic lang. With these four terminals, gaano kabilis ang uh, magiging biyahe ko from Valenzuela to Makati and vice versa? Okay. Very basic lang. I, am, I just want to for, know kung yeah, simulate tayo yeah. dahil for, all of uh, this naman we're yes. doing because we want to ease traffic. Yes. No? And so, I assume may simulation tayong ginawa. Yes, sir. Sabi ko nga sa computer, mabilis. Mababawasan ka mga 20-30% ng travel time. No? So, so from computer, 2 hours, mababawasan yes. siya ng 30 minutes? Tao. Ito ang target kaya natin, sir. Pag napaluwag namin yung yellow lane, we're hoping na yung mga nagdadala ng kotse, no, magbubus na lang kasi mas mabilis ang biyahe nila. Kasi nga, decongested ng yellow lane. Mababawasan ng kotse. Pero hanggang hindi tayo gumagawa ng scheme, for, for private cars, 1,000 a day ang nadadagdag, every day. Ang capacity po ng EDSA natin, 6,000 lang per hour. No? Ito yung bumper to bumper. Gusto mong tumakbo yan, 4,500. Ano yung mga scheme na hinihingi namin, number one? Madami lang magagalit. No? Y- Yusek, maputo lang kita, no? because uh, mayroon pang ibang magtatanong. But on the, on the next, may next hearing tayo, I want to see that simulation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll... Because we want to also explain sa mga kababayan natin na itong ginagawa natin, bibilis yung traffic. No. But we need to also simulate it and yes, sir. tingnan natin kung gaano kabilis yung traffic uh, after nitong uh, itong terminal sa tatayo natin. Because at the end of the day, yun ang gusto natin map- ipakita na maayos ang daloy ng traffic. Okay. Sir, may isa kang kami suggestion, no? if, if we may, no? Kung matatalaan nyo, every Christmas, ina-adjust namin yung mall hours. From 10 a.m., nakikiusap kami gawing 11 a.m. Kala nila, para saan yung isang oras? No? Para sa isang oras. Malaking bagay po yan. Why? We have 17 malls along EDSA. Ang average empleyado niya, 2 to 3,000. Meaning, more or less 50,000 ang sasabay pa sa rush hour na magbubus, magbumotol, magdadal sa sakit na nagtatrabaho dyan. Sa unang hour ng, ng EDSA, yung mga malls yan, they have 200 cars na kapila. Imagine that's 3,400 cars ang tatanggalin mo dun sa isang oras na yan. No? Imbis na umalis ng 8 o'clock yan or 7, umalis yan 9 or 10 na kasi 11 na yung bukas. Eh. No? We need na kailangan natin schedule. Ang sarado ng mall, kahit anong oras, mas late, mas pangoros kamin. Para hindi kasabay ng paglabas ng opisina. <laughs> Kaya lang, talaga ano eh, mahirap Mayroon gawin. Pasko lang namin niya napapadumad dahil nakikiusap kami sa mga malls. Next year, uh, Madam Chair, is uh, request ko to show us the simulation. You know, yes, we have sir. to understand yes, dahil we're not doing this we're not doing this because we want to do it. We're doing it because there's a positive effect to it. No? So, yun ang gusto namin maintindihan. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, bago tayo magpatuloy, no? bigyan natin yung ibang sektor ng pagkakataon na mag-ambag rin ang kanilang um, pag-aaral o idea tungkol dito, yung UP at saka yung Alt Mobility. So yung Alt muna, kasi tinulungan niya yung staff namin na maintindihan din yung... yung... Sige, go ahead. Uh, Madam Chair, first, thank you for the opportunity and in inviting the... Uh, we're part of the commuters uh, sector. So um, we're uh, a transport advocacy group called Alt Mobility. Uh, for us, first, um, I think we're actually focusing too much on vehicle travel time which is, I think, just uh, one half or one side of the picture. Um, probably, we should also, as a primary concern, we should look at the commuter experience. Kasi hindi lang po traffic actually ang tinitignan natin. Pag traffic lang po, baka maging short term or short sighted yung ating mga magiging uh, palisiya. Dahil po, ang totoong commuter, which is a majority of our people, will have additional uh, pamasahe, um, waiting time, Kung tatlo yung magiging tra- uh, transfers niya, kasama po yun. At uh, kailangan po niya maglakad. Kailangan niyo pong uh, sumakay ulit. So kung travel time lang po ang titignan, siguro po, para po sa mga dekotse, yun po yung pinaka tinitignan lang po nila. Pero tanungin po natin, siguro po, bababa yung travel time, let's say by 5 minutes or 10 minutes. 
Pero po, uh, for the commuter, ano ba, yung titignan lang natin is travel time. Nak nakahon tayo doon. Lim limitado na po yung tinitignan natin. Pero tanungin po natin yung mga commuters na dinaranas yung mga palisiya na ginagawa po natin. Ano po yung masasabi po nila? Natuwa po, matutuwa po ba sila sa mga policies na uh, pini-implement natin na maaari? Kasi may mga kilala po ako at ako rin po ay commuter. Uh, nagsasabi na either tumaas ng isang oras yung uh, ano nila, travel time dahil po sa mga bagong palisiya po na ito. At uh, naging malaki po yung focus po natin sa mga bus kahit po sinabi na nga po na 380,000 po ang dumadaan ngayon sa EDSA pero 6,500 lang ang sa bus pero yun pa rin po yung ating pinagpo-focusan. Uh, actually, sa C5, wala naman po masyadong bus dyan, walang bus terminal pero halos kasing traffic din. Actually, minsan mas, mas traffic pa sa C5. So, tingin ko po kung tatanggalin po natin yung mga bus sa EDSA or may mga bus terminal kakainin lang po ito ng growth nga po na sinasabi nyo ng pagdami po ng bumibili ng private car. So, ano ba, ngayon, in the short term, maybe in the less than one year, magkakaroon po tayo ng ginhawa dahil may natanggal tayong mga vehicles. Pero papalitan po yan lahat ng mga bagong sasakyan kung hindi po natin kukontrolin or imamanage yung pagdami po nila. Ngayon po, kaya po namin sinasabi na mas long term sana is yung i-prioritize natin sa ating mga metrics instead of vehicle travel time is the commuting experience. Bakit po? Dahil po, pag na-entice po natin ang mas maraming tao na mag-commute dahil mas mabilis, mas komportable, mas maganda yung experience nila, mas konti po yung tao ang gustong magdala ng sasakyan. And that would be a more effective way, we believe, uh, to reduce traffic congestion and improve uh, overall uh, commuting experience for everyone as a long-term vision. Uh, that's what we think. So as a transport economist po, so economist po, specifically working on transport uh, related issues, we see that uh, yung public transportation, walking and cycling as mentioned po by Senator Zopiri, are all more space efficient, more sustainable, and more inclusive transportation modes that we should be prioritizing. Now if we are focused mainly again on vehicle travel time, okay, mababawasan po natin ngayon, Pero in the long term, hahabol ulit ang mga bagong pa-purchase. So, halimbawa sa ibang bansa po, ang ginagawa po nila, pinaparami po nila yung, uh, pinapaganda po nila yung kanilang commuting experience, whether rail or road-based transportation, na to the point na pati po yung kanilang mga public officials or yung mga even CEOs, ay okay lang sumakay ng public transportation. So hopefully, ganun po sana natin parang shift natin ng konti ang ating efforts, wag tayong masyadong focus po sa uh, merely vehicle travel time. So, as a uh, note po, yung sa uh, proposal po namin uh, in the Senate and also in Congress, uh, nagpo-propose po kami na nag-file po kami ng bill in uh, coordination with Senator Grace po and also with Senator Kiko Pangilinan, nag-file po kami ng uh, Magna Carta for Dignified Commuting uh, sort of a commuter bill of rights which uh, okay, kung pagbibigyan nyo po akong basahin some of the key provisions that we have is first a maximum weight of 10 minutes of public transportation stops and terminals and uh, having a travel time of maximum one hour on, tra uh, on public transport from end to end let's say of EDSA which is around more than 15 kilometers and other more long term solutions so for us if we really want a more sustainable solution, we should focus on commuter experience. And uh, that way, we will be able to shift our mindset and um, be a more sustainable and inclusive mobility. Nga po. Okay. Thank you for mentioning uh, the most vital part of this hearing is, all, is the, uh, the welfare of the commuters. And hindi lang naman sila statistics, di ba? On the other hand, ipaalala din natin sa ating mga nandito na actually 80% ng ating mga kababayan walang sariling sasakyan. 80%. Doon sa Mega Manila, 80% po ang walang may sariling sasakyan at nagko-commute. Yung ilang porsyento na natitira, yun yung datos na nakuha natin, sila yung maraming sasakyan. <laughs> ba So, uh, UP muna bago si Mr. Yage ulit. Yes. 
uh, good afternoon. Um, uh, Dr. Grace Hamon had to leave, uh, so I'll be uh, reading her statement. No? I'm Toik Serna. I'm with the uh, Move Metro Manila. Dr. Grace Hamon is our uh, convenor. Move Metro Manila is an informal coalition of mobility advocates in Metro Manila. It organizes consultations and dialogues with transportation experts, stakeholders, and policymakers to contribute to the discourse on and in improvement of mobility in Metro Manila. Ako rin po ay kasama sa isang online group of commuters called uh, Commute. Uh, ilang beses na po kami nakapag-attend ng consultation ng MMDA at LTFRB on the issue of provincial bus ban. And we've expressed... Uh, in many occasions, yung aming disagreement dito. No? Um, so, ibalik lang po natin ulit yung focus sa commuters. Move Metro Manila advocates for people mobility. We urge government to look beyond vehicles and prioritize moving people. Comparing the number of cars with the buses, the road space they occupy, and the number of passengers they carry, we note that buses are 10 times more efficient in moving people than cars. Buses are not the problem. They carry the workers, the lifeblood of Metro Manila's economy. This blatant bias against the poor, those who rely on the public transport uh, because, frankly, they have no choice, will only hurt the metropolis economy. Uh, a JICA study said already, nabanggit na yung, yung economic cost no, of uh, traffic congestion daily, no, 3.5 billion pesos. Squeezing the bus users who comprise half of EDSA users can only hurt the economy more. The Mobility Coalition conducted an online survey among Metro Manila commuters from August 5 to 9. So isang linggo lang po ito. 21% of the respondents are provincial commuters. They come in the metropolis from Bulacan, Pampanga, Laguna, and Cavite. These commuters have to travel around three hours each way and have to make at least three transfers to reach their destinations. As it is, commute, commuting is already difficult for them. The provincial bus ban will certainly make things worse. In light of all of this, Metro Manila, Move Metro Manila recommends, number one, that government focus its efforts on and allocate more resources for the improvement of public transportation to discourage daily car use to work. Every three cars off the road creates road space for one bus that can accommodate 45 passengers. Number two, that government address the supply gap in public transportation instead of effectively reducing public transport supply with measures like the provincial bus ban. The average waiting time for commuters, according to our online survey, is 25 minutes. For provincial commuters, the average waiting time is 20 minutes. These are indicative of the low supply of public transportation and of the bad practice in the industry, where service and depo deployment of public transport is dependent on turnaround time. We expect that if the supply gap is addressed, Magiging reliable na po kahit papano yung ating public transport, some car users will shift to public transport use. Number three, that MMDA lift number coding of public utility vehicles as a strategy to immediately increase public transport supply. And finally, that MMDA allocate more road space in EDSA to public utility vehicles or and or make EDSA exclusively for high occupancy vehicles. So, yung mapaluwag po ang yellow lane, baka maganda, pa, paramihin natin yung yellow lane. And um, yung, yung sinasabi siguro na magtiis-tiis muna, baka magtiis muna yung ating mga single occupant vehicles and uh, antayin yung skyway for that. No? So, baka pwedeng i-shift po natin yung attention uh, sa commuters. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Um, Mr. Yage. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair. Ma I will be requesting our lawyer, uh, Attorney Aguilar, to explain the issue about the uh, writ of preliminary injunction, uh, which was uh, uh, from the court, uh, Kenson City uh, Regional Trial Court, Attorney Aguilar. Um, 
good afternoon po, Madam Chair. Um, mat, alam uh, basis po na banggit yung preliminary injunction. So, I just want to clarify um, its scope po, ma'am. Um, so, the uh, writ of preliminary injunction was issued by the Regional Trial Court of Quezon City in connection with the case filed by the nagkakaisang samahan ng nangangasiwa ng panalawigang bus sa Pilipinas, Incorporated po. Um, to enjoin the implementation of two uh, uh, issuances, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, the LTFRB Memorandum Circular Number 2019-001, which directed the modification of endpoint of provincial buses to end at the integrated terminals and prohibit, uh, prohibiting the provincial buses from passing through EDSA, as well as the MMDA Regulation Number 19002, um, which revoke or prohibit the issuance of business permits uh, on bus terminals uh, along EDSA. Um, the trial court issued a preliminary injunction on two grounds. Um, for First, for violation of the right to due process of the complainants, um, as the issuances were issued without prior consultation and um, without um, Are support. Are you sure there was no prior consultation? Is that true? Uh, I, I don't know the definition of consultation, no? but for two years, no, we have a meeting with the stakeholders, operators, we have a meeting with the city operators also. Uh, yung commuters, nagkaroon na rin po kami and LTFR video chairs always with us. Every and, time. and I know that's also always openly discussed. Yes, I mean, yes ma'am. Okay, go ahead. Um, um, on still on the issue on due process, uh, Madam Chair. Um, the court also found that the means adopted by the um, MMDA and LTFRB to solve the traffic in EDSA is unreasonable. Um, there is, uh, it appears there's no supporting study or prior um, in-depth study um, to support this uh, issuance as your honor. And finally, your honor, um, Madam Chair, um, the court also found that the issuance will violate the equal protection clause since there's no substantial distinction between the uh, provincial bus terminals and uh, provincial buses and city buses that is germane to the purpose of the law, which is to um, decongest traffic in EDSA. And lastly, um, we'd like to correct the notion that the injunction was issued um, without giving MMDA and LTFRB the opportunity to present evidence. As stated in page 3 of the order, uh, the public defendants have yet to file their respective answer and likewise fail to present evidence, notwithstanding having been given opportunity to do so in several scheduled hearings. We heard we heard uh, the court's view on why they granted the TRO. Maybe you can comply with those. Ah, I'm sorry, ma'am. Okay. Um, may mga isa pang tanong dito. Ilan ba talagang city buses natin na pinapayagan? LTFRB, alam, ilan libo? Uh, we're looking at about uh, 3,500, uh, more or less. About the provincial buses, how many? The provincial buses would be... Uh, there are about uh, 3,500 also. As, as mentioned, uh, there are about uh, 6,000 to close to 6,500 overall, as mentioned by MMDA earlier. So, nagdagdag ba kayo ng pagbibigay ng mga prangkisa dahil nga dito sa mga temporary terminals na nilagay ninyo? In so far as franchises are concerned, we will be opening up uh, additional franchises but not additional uh, units because we will only be utilizing... Uh, the existing units of the either of the provincial buses uh, or of the city buses because this is part of the rationalization of their routes. Uh, it's actually in the MC, uh, Your Honor. Okay. I have a question also, no? What's the difference between a P2P bus, which you're, you're, you're planning to add how many more P2P buses? Uh, so far as uh, when we open up the, uh, the interim uh, integrated terminals in uh, Santa Rosa and Valenzuela, we're looking at the other three uh, integrated transport terminal. I'm referring to PTEX, uh, the one in uh, Araneta, and the one in uh, Marikina. And having said that, uh, we are to put up additional P2P routes, but not, I, I like to make this clear, but not additional buses but additional P2P routes to serve these five terminals. Okay, so just to be clear, sir, because uh, we've had a lot of phone-in questions, uh, that it defeats the purpose of having to issue uh, more franchises for more additional buses if we're going to prevent provincial buses from coming in. So walang bagong 
mga P2P na sasakyan. Uh, uh, lang, no additional units po. No uh, units. Because the whole issue here, and I, I would like to take up uh, uh, what was said earlier, no? uh, we fully agree that everything that we're discussing here, I think we all understand that it's about commuting experience. And having said that, that has always been in the mind of the uh, policymakers, the transport planners in government. And I'm sure we all, we're all in one view on this one. Um, we would like to, uh, we would like to uh, disabuse the mind that we're not after buses. We're after 100 privately managed, privately owned bus, provincial bus terminals all across Metro Manila starting off with EDSA. The buses would still be there. And that's precisely where we're trying to rationalize these things for a much better commuting experience. I'm sure there are a lot of perspective on how we're going to address uh, improving commuting experience. And certainly, this type of dialogue, this type of hearing, would invite our attention, no? whichever way, no? from them or from us mm -hmm. to them, so that we'd be able to understand each other. But rest assured, the, the the uh, objective of government is precisely not only to address traffic congestion, but also to improve the commuting experience of um, our commuters uh, actually, in Metro Manila. Actually, Attorney Delgra, Chairman Delgra, ganito, no? Isa sa pwede natin tignan, aside from the time na pwede pumasok yung provincial buses, baka hindi lang yun, eh. Baka, baka pwede silang payagan uh, most of the time. Kaya lang siguro yung mga terminals nila within... EDSA or within the area, yun ang pwedeng alisin para kung may utilize na yung FTI, may utilize na yung sa Araneta, doon na lang pupunta imbis na sa kanya-kanyang terminal. Kasi nga, isa yun talaga sa naiisip, no? Pag lumalabas, di ba? Four minutes. E alam naman natin ang four minutes kung gaano karaming backup. So for our, para po sa ating mga pasahero, merong pupuntahan na isang maayos na ter terminal malapit sa lugar nila. Kung sa Cubao yan, eh di sa Araneta. Kung yan, kung sa may bandang north, nandun din. Alam ko, meron din dapat pinaplano dun sa may area ng sa north, di ba? Uh, yung mga Ayala, SM, ano mga, mga north EDSA, wala ba dun? Puro city, city bus. No? Yung dumadaan sa Mega Mall sa north. Di may mga base sila, puro city bus. Yeah. Pero that's why, what we can consider is actually putting provincial yes. bus terminals within the areas in EDSA instead of retail para doon na lang pupunta yung mga pasahero, di ba? Yeah. Tapos ipasara yung iba dito. Okay. Ako na? Okay. Ma'am, yung sa amin nga na interim, interim, no? Uh, yun nga yung sinabi ko, kaya namin sinumulan kasi nga matagal pa yung permanente. Eh. So, pero yun talaga ang target, eh. Kaya tayo naglalagay ng, yung mga terminals yan, dapat nakakonek yan sa bawat isa. Kaya may mga P2P tayo, para at least yung mga may maleta nga. Eh, no? yung, uh, I just want to, ano, yung sinabi niya kanina regarding sa additional time. Right now, ha, this, 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 this situation right now, yung traffic. Ha? From Santa Rosa to Cubao, siguro 3 hours yan, 3 and a half. No? Yung situation right now, ha, traffic. Pag dinikongest natin yung yellow lane na yan, baka ang biyahe, from Santa Rosa to Araneta is less than 2 hours. So kahit 30 minutes ka mag-waiting area, maglipat ka, transfer, which naka-aircon ka, may mga push card ka, no? Mako-compensate nung speed pag na-decongest natin ang yellow lane. Ngayon, laging sinasabi yung inconvenience, eh. No? I, pero paano naging inconvenience yung sitwasyon right now Na nakita naman natin, yung harap ng terminal, nakaupo sila sa kanto, nakaupo sa bag, naghihintay lang sa sakyan. Kasi, kasi, lagi kong sinasabi, ma'am, na yung terminal, hindi yan ang final destination eh. Lilipat pa yan eh. Ngayon, yung harap ng terminal, it's a no-loading and loading zone yan. Naabuso lang dati. Kaya sila nahihirapan ngayon. Kasi dati rin, naabuso yung prangkisa nila. Pwede sila bumaba, sumakay along EDSA, which bawal. Nung pinatupad lang namin enforcement na diretso kayo sa terminal, paglabas ng terminal, may bit-bit yan isang sakong gulay, let's say. Hindi ka ba pwede sumakay sa harap? You need to walk 100 meters para sa loading and loading base. Okay. Um, Alex, uh, Mr. Yage, kung magkakaroon halimbawa ng polisiya, kung saan yung mga provincial bus terminal sa EDSA, alisin nga, 
pero may mga maayos na terminal kung saan pwede sila doon kumuha ng pasahero. Ito ba ay magiging um, katanggap-tanggap sa inyo? Uh, actually po, uh, iyon po ang practice sa ibang bansa. So, uh, mal mal nakikita na po natin, siguro kung gusto po natin maging uh, very uh, 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 efficient ang transportation mo dito, connected dapat to yung local, yung national, at saka yung mga, yung community-based community transport. Lahat po dapat yung connected. So, ang mangyayari po niyan, uh, kung susundin po natin yung universal practice po, yun po ang dapat gawin. So, ano ang uh, dapat na po ang uh, main uh, requirement ng isang terminal? Dapat po, connectivity. So, dapat connected, kunyari, national yung uh, biyahe. Uh, inter-region, inter galing ho sa Visayas, galing sa Mindanao. Pagdating ho sa Manila, meron siyang makoconnect na sasakyan, pwede siyang sumakay ng train, pwede siyang sumakay ng MRT, suma pwede siyang sumakay ng jeep, o sumakay ng uh, UV Express, o whatever, makakarating doon siya doon sa kanyang pupuntahan. So, ang mangyayari po niyan, uh, nung pinag-aralan po yung PITX, ang, uh, yung PITX po kasi, ang unang talagang uh, connectivity niyan, uh, yung uh, LRT. Ang un un unfortunately, ano, nagumpisa yung PITX, walang connection. So pagdating mo ng sasakyan doon sa PITX, wala kang sasakyan. Ma oh. ma hindi kayo mahihirapan. So kung tama po yung sabi nyo, kung gusto mo natin i-rationalize mo yan, hindi po, po hindi po pwede yung temporary. Yung, uh, pag temporary po kasi, Lalo lang natin pahirapan po yung mananakay. Kawawa po yung mananakay. Pero kung gagawa po tayo ng uh, talagang integrate, integrated terminal na fully uh, connected sa lahat po ng transport modes, yun po ang dapat natin gawin. Hindi, kailangan mo pag-aralan mo mabuti yan. Kasi kung puro temporary lang yung gagawin natin, katakot-takot to na pahirap po sa mananakay yan. Madam Chair, siguro Yusek Jojo, gano'ng katagal ho ba yung interim? Hanggang matapos po na build kayo yung permanent nila, ma'am. So, kaya matatapos yung permanent? For example, FTI. Yung, yung FTI, ma'am, may partial operability lang kami until 2021. But, 2021. Tapos, uh, the whole project uh, will take another year after. Yung PITX naman, uh, hindi po totoo yung kanina sinabi na walang concourse papuntang Line 1 extension. Meron po Inaantay lang po natin yung private na operator to build it uh, and connect it to Baclaran. Alam mo, sa tingin ko, ha, ganito, hindi tayo eksperto kaya nga tayo nag-uusap-usap. Kunwari hindi pa nga interconnected dahil wal, yung train system wala. Pero pwede naman yung interconnection na iba-ibang mga modes of transportation in one like bus, city, UV express, taxi. Now, government has a lot of idle lands. Okay, na pwede natin siguro pag-aralan. On the other hand, tingnan mo yung nangyari dito sa Santa Rosa. In the meantime, ginamit nila yung isang mall. Di ba? Baka naman, alam mo, lahat naman tayo gusto natin na kahit pa paano merong beneficyo sa atin. Siguro kung yung mga malls na sa totoo lang nakakasagabal talaga sila sa EDSA, baka naman makatulong rin na ayusin nila na maging hub sila ng sasakyan. Kasi, see that Mega Mall has, but it, it's very limited. Uh, it, ca it can only accommodate certain, ano, di ba, may, may capacity. Pero siguro, kung papayagan rin lang natin sila magpatayo doon, eh, laki-lakihan na nila, then the government doesn't have to spend, but they will welcome those transportation um, stops. Uh, ano bang, Mr. San Juan? Yes, attorney. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like you to know that across all our malls, we have terminals because this is precisely a public service we want to give our tenants, customers, and the public in general. In fact, in the case of Santa Rosa, whether or not there is a provincial bus ban, the terminal has been existing, and it's part of our expansion program po talaga. Oh, yeah. And nung hiningan po kami ng tulong, nag, um, oh, sumang-ayon po kami kasi alam namin makakatulong. Kasi ho, uh, most of our development there is open area. So it's very, it will help to build the terminal. Madam Chair, so can we just get an update from PITX? Kung ano na yung, because I remember it, para nung umpisa nagka-problema, kasi 
hindi nga seamless yung travel when they open. Dumadating yung provincial bus doon, tapos wala namang dumadating na uh, city bus or other modes of transportation. And it's been, ilang buwan na ba kayo nag-operate? Uh, we've been operating for uh, less than a year, around seven, eight months. Uh, maybe yes. you can share to us. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator. Well, just to give an update on the uh, PITX or the Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange, I think the issue right now has been connectivity. And to give an update on connectivity, I just have some numbers here. When we started operations in December of 2018, only 64 provincial buses were coming to us daily. But now it's almost 500. Wow. So that's almost a tenfold increase in transportation connectivity. For city buses, it's, it was 715, nominal increase to 740 because uh, we wanted to ensure that all of the, the, um, our uh, kababayans coming in from the provinces, Cavite, Batangas, Laguna, would have options coming into Metro Manila. Again, um, it's always our aim for a better commute. That's why the terminal, you have free Wi-Fi, you have clean CRs, you have airport quality seats. Again, we designed this to be an airport-like experience. That's why all of the amenities here are world-class. Um, number three, um, for traditional Jeeps, we've actually doubled. From 172 in December, it's already 350. So, wala na pong problema, yung mga kababayan natin, as soon as possible, na manggagaling from the province going to Metro Manila. For modern Jeeps, it's also doubled. From 100, it's now um, every day 205. This is as of June, July 2019. And lastly, for AUVs, we've also doubled from a daily traffic of just 25. It's already 56. So um, definitely PI takes can carry more. Um, under our concession agreement with the government, our target was 100,000 passengers a day. We've only been averaging around 55 to 60,000 passengers per day. So there's still a big um, upside from this one. As a matter of fact, PITX was built to carry 200,000 passengers per day. And this is to make sure that everyone has a good uh, commuting experience. As a matter of fact, um, we admit that when we started, we were receiving a lot of flack. But now we're, uh, we're encouraged because a lot of those on social media now um, talk about it's just a matter of testing the waters, discipline, because you have to start somewhere. And um, again, it is, this is a controversial issue, but again, you have to start somewhere. And we're encouraged by the positive reviews we've been getting from all the passengers. As a matter of fact, um, we already have automatic kiosks that dispense tickets already. Some of our passengers don't have to go through the lines especially the seniors and the PWDs, may mga automatic kiosks na po kami. Actually, yun nga yung sinasabing birthing pains. Di ba? Pag merong bago, hindi pa natin nakakasanayan, talagang we're averse to it. Ayaw natin. <clears throat> Pero kung makikita, katulad yan, kaya nga umpisa pa lang, medyo kumpiyansa ako na merong namumuhunan na ayusin. In fact, we should commend nga the, the ones, the concessionaires for PITX because they're the ones that really took a risk immediately and delivered on time, unlike the others. Uh, in fact, if you see their Mactan Cebu Airport, yan talagang gold standard ng mga airport ngayon sa ating bansa. So I have no doubt that there's also uh, some sort of patriotism on their part to be able to make, uh, contribute to the well-being of our passengers. I just hope that, ang nakikita kasi natin dito, totoo ang dami talagang terminals din sa EDSA, pero kasi it's convenient for our passengers. So, Maybe we can partner up with the private sector also, as they're already doing, para doon na, doon na mag-ano. Pero yung mga ibang kukot pa, sasakyan ng mga bus, ng mga provincial buses, baka pwede sa labas na ng Metro Manila pag, pagka mina-maintenance or ano, di ba, Mr. Yage. Pero yung immediate ones, payagan dito sa mga interim or even permanent, pero FTI has to deliver pati na rin yung mga private sector, sana wag naman masyadong mataas ang singil ninyo dun sa mga nagpaparada ng mga mga bus. So, Ira, before we... Um, Mag-add lang po kami dun sa provincial bus terminals. Um, I th we think that for the interim, it's difficult to shift them agad kung hindi pa ready yung interim terminals. We visited some of them and hindi pa maganda yung itsura niya, unlike siguro yung PITX. If we shift maybe all the south to PITX, it's good enough. Kasi they have 
world class. But for, ano... At saka malayo kasi. Mal- diba? Mas malayo, malayo. yung iba. And so, kung meron din sa Santa Rosa, which, because there's a bulk of our population hmm. living in that area, that will help. That will service that particular constituency. But we also need here, within Metro Manila, yes, na talagang mapupunta na hindi malayo. Madam Chair, pwede ba matanong si SM Prime? Hindi ba kaya ng North Ed sa inyo? Mag-accommodate ng provincial buses? Ah, masyado pong maliit ang North Ed sa uh, yung area namin doon. In fact, uh, generally, ho, across our malls, we give up to 1.2 hectares na po. Uh, generally, para lang dito, instead of us using it as leasable space, we make sure to give up areas uh, for this particular public service. But I doubt po kung kasya ng North Ed sa po. Okay, um, magsasara na po tayo ngayon, ano? Okay. Ms. LV, two minutes. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, First of all, most of these um, issues that we are uh, discussing right now have uh, been discussed for so long. Uh, number one, uh, I think that was in 2017 when we had the, ex the emergency traffic summit and our uh, main speaker was the head of JICA in the country. There is a long dream plan from 2020, from 2010 to 2030, and it was decided by DPWH, the OTR, and NEDA and JICA. There is a presentation. I have. I will be giving uh, the committee the copy which I have right now. But the other thing I wanted to point out, just this one thing, everything that we're talking about seems to be bits and pieces. Now, what we need is a holistic approach to this. Everything that I heard today are only concentrating on the land. We are forgetting that information technology has been invented for a long time. There is what we call now a holistic approach to travel using the intelligent transit system. And I informed USEC uh, De Leon last year, the same time as now, August last year, there was a fund that I ADB offered to uh, come up with a uh, study, a uh, proof of concept fund for this intelligent traffic system. However, until now, there is, there is no letter from the OTR requesting the release of that fund. And uh, it should have been very helpful. And so intelligent have... traffic system, like coordinated sequ sequencing ng traffic lights? Yes, mga No, it starts from dispatching where there is a central system, which is MMDA. They should be a, a cyber control center already where they can even read from their monitors what are the GPS numbers and the plate numbers of all the vehicles in Metro Manila, they do not need to be on the ground to accost them because there are uh, sensors that will stop the vehicles if they are not in the proper ABC. And all this can be arranged and it can be organized through that intelligent traffic system. And this is a project proposed by the uh, ADB? There is, there is a, con a proof of concept fund that ADB had offered already. How much is that? Uh, they they uh, is offered, this a loan or a grant? No, it's a grant, two million US dollars. So uh, what I'm saying are you familiar now is, with that? You said the Leon. Yes, in fact, I wrote, I, I made a draft of letter from to be signed by him. To okay, you said. Uh, yes, uh, we know about that uh, grant. It's uh, an unsolicited proposal by a private proponent. Parang dinedirekta sa ADB para i fund ni ADB. Uh, but uh, MMDA, uh, for the information of uh, everyone, has already this uh, ongoing uh, master planning study of ITS. It's being funded naman by JICA. It's a comprehensive study already. So, uh, wala, hindi na kailangan nung, nung uh, ADB uh, funded uh, master plan na yun. Okay. Uh, we have to... Madam uh, Chair, since sabanggit na na meron na kayo ongoing study, kailan mo matatapos to, Yusek Garcia? ITS? Ah, Okay. Uh, Ma'am, nasaan pala kami yun eh. Yung sa phase 2, no? meron tayo, wala na yung mga tao. 
Well, succeeding years, meron kami project eh, sa ITS. Hindi lang ito yung tungkol sa OBR, pati yung sa no contact apprehension, kompleto na rin. Ano? Kasi talaga ang target namin ngayon, ma'am, wala ng enforcer sa ground. Puro camera na lang. Eh, no? Kasi dyan sisimula ang kotong, ang away, etc. No? So, ongoing naman. Ongoing. Hindi ko lang, wala lang sa akin ngayon, sa data ko, kung ilang years. Pero nagsisimula na po kami. This year lang, I have additional 200 cameras. Eh. This year lang. Okay, um, yung sa Garcia, paalala lang sa mga enforcers ng MMDA, pati na rin sa ating mga HPG. Pag meron silang in-apprehend, o kunyari may, may minor na aksidente, itabi na kaagad. Huwag nang, di ba? <laughs> Ma'am, yun ang problema nga namin kasi sa insurance. Actually, ah. sinabi ko na sa house yan, pagka nagkabanggaan kasi, ayaw nila tanggalin. Kasi karamihan, walang comprehensive insurance. Sabi ko nga, yung binabayaran natin insurance na TPL, value wala yun eh, sa LTO. Sabi ko, dapat bago ulit so may insurance na comprehensive para pagka nagkabangga, walang sisihan, pwede nang itabi. Ang problema ngayon, kailangan may polis eh. We're not authorized to investigate. Kailangan may polis lagi. So yung polis, hahanapin pa namin yung nearest station. Hindi naman pwede maglagay ng polis anywhere ng investigador. Kaya po talaga natatagalan. Nako, malaking problema yan. Yes, Actually, dapat pwedeng Kuna na lang ng litrato should yes, be enough evidence. In fact, we can probably meet with uh, insurers. Yes, ma'am, please. Diba? Like, yes, ma'am. With particular angles, na if kung required na ganito, ganyan, diba? Sabihan niyo yung policy lang. holders. I'm sorry, I, I, you know, I wish we had more time, but we need to arrange uh, uh, for, for our plenary. Um, before we officially close the other agenda for today's hearing, is Senate Bill Number 125, or an act establishing the National Transportation Safety Board. In the 17th Congress, there were several bills filed, and the committee came up with Committee Report Number 218, which was approved. However, due to lack of time, it was not passed in plenary. Transportation safety is an important issue that has long languished as a second priority. The recent Iloilo Gimara Strait tragedy involving the capsizing of three motorized bankas raised questions which need answers if we are to give justice to the victims' uh, families. Uh, I would like to manifest that the said committee report and other records be adopted and form part of the committee report that this committee will submit. Ngayon, uh, for the MMDA and the DOTR, please consider the immediate implementation of the 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Uh, partial bus ban. Ito ba yung, not, I, I'm not, Consider, I'm not saying that we do it, but this is something that we need to um, think about as the transport officials nodded to Congressman Villafuerte's proposal. Uh, if I may, uh, it's actually in the MC already recognizing the request of uh, yes. okay. uh, those from B B Bicol okay. uh, for the window hour. Okay, in the next hearing, we expect the heads of the concerned government agencies Primarily the DOTR, MMDA, and DPWH secretaries and chairman to attend and bring us the transport master plan for both short, medium, and long term. Otherwise, we will assume that this country does not have a transport master plan and we have all been going blindly into this. On the part of this committee, we will review the traffic management powers of the MMDA to see if they really have the power to implement policies such as this, and if they do, if these are valid exercises of their power. We might also have to consider giving them um, an expanded power base to include uh, the Mega Manila areas. Maybe we can also come up with a ter technical working group between uh, all concerned government agencies and stakeholders, transport sectors, commuter experts, etc. For the MMDA, please submit the committee to the committee the simulation of their proposal for, for, for traffic decongestion. Kung talagang may napag-aralan na kayong tungkol dito. May mga bagay-bagay na maaaring makatulong maibsa ng traffic, hindi lamang sa pagbaban ng mga provincial buses. Uh, number one, yung FTI uh, station, dapat... Kailan ba yan matatapos? So, tatanungin natin ang DPWH at tanungin na rin natin ang DOTR sa susunod. Ang LRT1 extension papunta sa Cavite. Ang LX, NLEX, SLEX, uh, di umano ay matatapos uh, uh, sa, sa 
pagtatapos ng taon or first quarter ng next year. Ang elevated walkway, hinihinga ninyo ng additional funding. Uh, ito'y pag-uusapan natin sa budget. At ang pagbibigay ng oras para sa provincial buses at possible um, partnership with the private sector within Metro Manila, not Mega Metro Manila, not Mega Manila but within Metro Manila para mabilis ang pagbabiyahe din ng ating mga kababayan na hindi sila uh, mahihirapan na tanggalin ang mga bus terminals dito sa EDSA. So with that, I'm sorry to say that we will need another hearing for this. Hindi naman, uh, sino ba naman ang gusto ng hearing ng hearing? Pero kung maraming nag a natural, kailangan na naman mag-hearing. Hindi lang po ito aksaya sa oras ng ating mga kababayan, aksaya din to sa oras ninyo na pababalikin ko na naman. So with that, this hearing is suspended.